Number one, that's the first page. It rained outside and it's raining here because I'm soaking wet. <laughs> Y'all feel good this morning? What's the title of the message? I'm taking authority over my life. Taking your authority? Taking your authority. Huh? This is the title. I'm, I'm going back with number two, yes. Taking authority over my life. Hey Amen. I want everybody to speak that right now. I'm taking authority over my life. Genesis chapter number 1 verse number 26. And God said let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon that creepeth upon the earth. What did I just read to you? That God in the beginning gave man dominion over all things. Man, <clears throat> man didn't realize his authority that he had until he didn't have it. God set this thing up. God's a spirit. He is not, he don't have a bodily form. He's looking for a body to dwell in. And he, he was looking for a people. He raised his children to worship him. That's why he created man. To worship him. To have fellowship with him. To be one with him. And he'd be one with you. Amen. God gave us dominion. Amen. Now watch this. Genesis number three. Genesis number three. Now the serpent was more stubborn than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, said unto the woman, yea, not to the man. Because God gave man a authority, gave him a word that this is what you're to do and this is what you're not to do. He didn't give it to the woman, he gave it to the man. And God said, you shall not eat every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the trees which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, shall not die, you shall not die, surely die. For God doeth know that, the, that in the days you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods. Small Jesus. Knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes of the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat and gave unto her husband, and he did eat himself. What happened in the garden that day? Man gave away their authority to Satan. Satan became the power of this world. He became the God of this world, not the God, not the Creator. Satan only can do what man gives him to do. And Satan himself, he, he thought he was winning. He thought he won the race when he crucified Jesus. Jesus went and conquered the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He went and took back what man lost. Jesus was a man. He was God in a fleshly body. The same God that's in him is in you and I. That's why he said greater works, y'all. Better hear me right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We've got to take our rightful stand with God. Amen. Now watch this. Genesis 6. Go there, please. Genesis 6. Verse number 11. Yeah. 
Jim, I mean Ephesians 6, I'm sorry. Ephesians 6, verse number 11. Ephesians 6, verse number 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What are we wrestling against? Devils. Devils. Little devils that have no authority over your life. Come on. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Turn to Matthew number 10, verse number 8. Let me start verse number 7. And I, I mentioned it, but I want you to see this. This is what Jesus said. Is Jesus in you? Yes. As you go preach, say it. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What did he tell you to do? Help me. What? Who did he tell that to? Did he tell that to Paul? Did he tell that to Peter? Did he tell that to you? Heal the sick? Cleanse the leper? Oh, raise the dead? Cast out devils? Freely receive? Freely give? <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God has given you authority. The same God that's in you that was in a fleshly body, God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. God was looking for a body to dwell in when He saved your life. Somebody better help me about right now. Hallelujah. I have started to realize right now I gave the devil too much authority over my life. Sickness can't stay in this house. Why? Because I take command over what God has given me. He is the God of the whole universe. He's God of everything. He is the great I am. But the great I am is us. And he has told us to take command. Jesus said, that's the writing of Jesus. Your Bible should be in red writing. And that's the writing of Jesus. It's not my word, it's his. Take authority. Sickness try to come against you, take authority over you. When you take your authority, you don't have to beg. And that's what God has shown me. He has saved me once. And he has called me to be who he has anointed me to be. And he has anointed me to take authority over sickness, over disease, over devils. Hallelujah. I remember when I seen the dead raised at the hospital. I was sitting in there. Amen. Jenny, I was sitting there. I said, Holy Spirit, show me how to pray. You know why? Because in myself, I didn't know how. Show me how to pray. And I went over to that bed. That man brain dead. Laying there, all of his organs shut down. His liver not functioning. His kidney not functioning. His body completely dead. An old deed on heroin and done messed him up. Nobody was in that room but the man's ex-wife and the, and, the, and the preacher, the chaplain from the hospital. And the Holy Spirit said, take authority. I went over to that bed and I said, if you carcass, you hear me? In the name of Jesus, you're going to ride. I ain't fooling with you today. You're going to ride. In Jesus' name, arise. And that man raised up, stared at me for about four minutes, and looked over, and going back down, and looked over to the ex-wife. She done snotting and everything, the throat was 
or, or masking everything off, just uh, praying and crying out in tongues. Amen. Now, then. And then, then the nurse comes flying in there and she said, Oh, don't get excited. We're looking for a direct response. 120 over 70. That's a direct wow. response to me. Hallelujah. I asked God to bring him back to save him. You see, I took yes. a man. Yes. Hear me. He gave us authority over yes. this. Yes. Come on. Right. Yes. You start mentioning and raising the dead in church, they're going to run you out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But what you going to do when it happens to you? And I'm here to tell you, I asked God to bring him back to save him. Not to let him leave that hospital and go back to where he was, but to bring him back to save him. I said, hell, turn him loose. Amen. You see, when you're in the Holy Ghost, you can take your rightful authority. God has given us his spirit. He has given us power. Come on, somebody. Amen. He has given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall hurt me ever hurt you. Amen. Ain't no devil in hell can touch you. Ain't no devil in hell can whisper you to take your life when you take your rightful state. I was missing, uh, abused when I was a child. I was beaten. I don't know how many times when I was a child. But I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, and thank glory to God. I can tell you that happened to me when I was a child, but I'm here to tell you today, I stand anointed. I stand appointed. I stand with my rightful stand. In God will I stand. In God will I trust. In Him will I live. In Him will I die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told us the doctor we went up in another minute and I see you certain way in room. I said, we just saw about raising the dead. We're going to command, amen, your situation to come in line with the world. Amen. 30 people in that room drawing a circle. Mama jumping up and down, up on the other end, said, he's healed, he's healed, he's healed. The next day I got to the hospital. The doctor left me a message and he said, tell the preacher, God did do a message, a miracle in that man's life. But he needs another miracle. He's rotting from the inside out. Yeah. I come out of his room, had to went in and see him. This lady come running down the hall. She said, Reverend, you remember me? I said, man, I'm sorry, man. You were praying for us last night. My son got shot in the head. They said he would never come out of a coma, and to get it would be a complete vessel and he would be paralyzed the rest of his life. I can tell you right now, amen, that mama said, amen, as soon as I left out that room, he opened his eyes. The doctors were amazed. He was moving all of his hands, amen, all of his fingers. He was moving all of his toes. He was watching 72 hours and going to get him up to walk. Amen. Praise God. I'm here to tell you that you can take your rightful stand and get in the spirit of God. Amen. And let God do what he needs to do in your life. Amen. Praise God to it power you. Amen. To bless you. Amen. And to bless everything around you. Yes, Don't live another day wondering why God ain't blessed you. He blessed you when he saved you. He blessed you. He loved you. When you didn't deserve it. When I didn't deserve it. When I was sinner, Christ died for me. And I'm here to tell you they said we're not even going to have to take the bullet out where it's lodged. It's not going to hurt anything. And we're allowed to do more damage if we go in and take the bullet out. The next day I went up to the hospital. And I walked in that man's room. And I looked at him. I said, you ready to give your life to Jesus? He said, yes. God. Gave his life to the Lord. I'm talking about the one that was raised from the dead. There was two that were raised from the dead at the same time. Why? Because I took my rightful stand and I listened to what God said to me and taken authority over what he had given me. Amen. Look, ain't nobody been, uh, some people been mistreated harder than others. Some people don't know what it's like to go through rejection. Some people don't, I used to buy people drugs just to be my friends. Hear what I'm saying? 
just to have fellowship. And I was up there. <laughs> I remember being at the mall. And we'd ride around in circles at the mall. You probably knew that too. Ride around in circles at the mall. Man, I mean, that was a thing. Get in my hot dog, go over them speed bumps, spin them tires, light them things up. Amen. And act like an idiot. And God told me, out there in the midst of all that, he said, this is not where you belong. Amen. And conviction would hit me. And God would cause them people to reject me so that they could not come close to me. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Yes, amen. amen. So praise God. When that man got saved, I started to go out the room and the Holy Spirit said this. He said, the family is fixing to ask you not to come back. They're going to ask the ex-wife not to come back. And, and uh, uh, they're going to call for his drug buddies to come see him because they have an insurance policy on this man and they want him to date him. I don't get it. It's true. I told the ex-wife what the Lord told me <laughs> so that she would not be deceived. So that she couldn't be uh, uh, shocked. And I told her, I said, they're fixing to ask you to stay away. This is what the Lord told me. And I'm telling you, the next day I called and I said, I want to make sure it's all right for me to come because I knew what the Lord had told me. Oh, preacher, you know you can come anytime. You are the life of me. <laughs> I got off the elevator and I had somebody with me. And when I got off the elevator, I saw the sister and she did like this. It looks like a, what's his name? Um, the huh? boys. <laughs> Blake Chilton. Blake Chilton. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she said these words. She said, Preacher, we decided the brother didn't come. It's the sister. They said the sister didn't go to work. They said, uh, We decided we don't want you here no more. We don't want the ex wife here no more. We didn't tell her to stay away. I'm going to get his drug buddies up here to see it tomorrow. I said, you ain't fool with me. I already know him. That's why I had somebody with me. Because I knew what God told me. I said, God told me he would not leave this hospital. Two weeks after that, he died in the hospital. Let it be with the Lord. You see, it's time to take our rightful stand. God given us that job given, uh, uh, given authority. Amen. To stand. Amen. To be who he's called us to be. I, that's just one story. That's just one of me that I can tell you. But, man, God is so good to us. It will, it will just listen to what He is saying. And so, amen, praise God. Turn the Bible to Luke 19. Luke 19? Luke 10. Luke Number 19. I want somebody to read this for me, please. Wait, 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 wait. What did he say? Who did he give power? You, you. Say, say me. Me. Come on. I give you power to treat, to tra tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why, 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 why did God give us power? Because he knew you could not stand in yourself. He knew you could not stand and make it on your own. He gave you power. Come on, somebody. Yes. He gave you power over devils. Yes. Why? He empowered you. It's the word. Don't let the devil beat you up no more. Greater is he within you than he within the world. Right. Amen. God has given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. My Jesus, hallelujah. Let's take our stand. What I did, my daddy was dead 22 minutes 
After 22 minutes, I stretch my hand out of his room and I say in Jesus' name, you will rise. Come on. I spoke that my daddy will rise. I took the authority of what God had given me because my daddy was not there for five years after we were put in the orphanage. And trust me, my daddy did the best he could, but praise God, he didn't have it. He just did what he could do. He showed love in his own way. And God let him come back to life after 22 minutes. The man, the doctor said, we done turned, we done, we done walked away, he flatlined 22 minutes. And after 22 minutes, his heart started beating. And I said, excuse me, doctor, I know why he's here, because I spoke. And I said, God, I want the time with my daddy to share with him what's in my heart. This was on a Monday, <laughs> on a Friday morning, my brother come up to me, and I ain't said nothing wrong with you. And they said, when daddy, when the doctors come in, we're going to shut off the machine. I said, that's fine. They said, because daddy did. I said, you can shut off the machine, but you're going to see that you had four days to talk to your daddy. Amen. And give everything you need to get off you and realize he's not dead, but he is breathing on his own. They turned that machine off at 8 o'clock. Four hours later, he's still breathing. And around noon, around noon, my daddy's started, blood pressure started dropping down. When he got down to 46, I went out of the room. And I said, Daddy, fly with angels. My brothers realized that I wasn't crazy that I knew what I was talking about. It's time to take our rightful stand in what God has given us. It's time, praise God. Turn your Bible to Romans 6. Verse number 16. Romans 6, 6. 16, 6, 16. Amen. So you got the microphone, read that for me, please. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And now wait, 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 wait. So you telling me it's like this. You yield into one or the other. You're for one and you're for the other. You're yielding to pain. You're yielding to sickness. You're yielding to gossip. You're yielding to things you know that's going to pull you down. You're yielding to depression and you accept the depression. You're yielding to those things in your head and you're letting those things in your head take control of you. I'm here to tell you, praise God, we are one way or the other. We're hot or we're cold. That's it. Yes. Amen. If we look warm, he's going to what? Spew us out. Yep. Spew us out. I'm about you. I don't want me spewing. <laughs> it makes a mess when you get spewed. <laughs> so you're going to yield yourself to what you see or you're going to yield yourself to what God said. Faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So you can see yourself as he said and believe. Well, I hope y'all getting this this morning. Amen. I'm about to burst up here. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. You've got to understand your God-given right. Turn to Mark, the 11th chapter. Verse number 22. Amen. Ginger, you got a microphone right there. Uh, right there beside you, right there. 11 and 22? Yeah. Mark 11 and 22. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to this word, please. It's powerful. Okay, Mark 11, 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, 
and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. There, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. So you just said, you just read that you have, what is that? You have what he said. What you said. Right. When you have what you more, said. You shall receive. Amen. Amen. So when you ask pray it shall be given. and you stand believing. You go, girl. You want me to keep on? <laughs> now, watch this. Seek and you shall find. <laughs> Matthew. Matthew. Verse number uh, 17. Verse number, Matthew 17. Verse number 20. 17, 20? Yes. Amen. Amen. Somebody uh, give Dennis that microphone. Dennis, read that for me, please. Here you go, brother. Hold on. Just put 17. Matthew 17. 20. Yes. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Amen. And Amen. nothing will be impossible. Come on. Amen. Nothing. Did y'all hear that? That's right. So what did God say? If you have the faith of a mustard seed, which is a tiny little if you put a mustard seed in your hand, you got to have a magnifying glass to see it. Now watch this. He said you can literally move mountains. You can have what you say. Did you say you can have what Jesus said? Jesus said you can have what you say. That's the word of God, people. It's not my word. I'm telling you something. God is shaking me. God is changing me. Why is he changing me? Because he's telling me it's time that the church take that God-given stand and take authority over the sick and quit letting the sick die in the church. Quit letting the sick, my God, be in poverty. My God, because of sickness, if the church is in poverty, if the people in poverty, the church is in poverty. God said he gave you power. Yes. Amen. To obtain wealth. Find that scripture for me, Susan, please. God gave you power. God gave it to you. It's up to you to take command. To get what belongs to you. My Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus was looking for a body to dwell. My God. John 4, 24. And while she's looking for that scripture, John 4, 24. It says, come on somebody, heaven. The Spirit of the Lord. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Did God fill you with His Holy Spirit? And my God, we got power, Amen. To get what God said, amen. I'm not the devil's stepping stone no more. Amen. Pray he can't control my life no more. He can't control my mind no more. He can't rob my... Come on, somebody. Take authority over your life. Take authority over your mountain. You speak to your mountain. And you command your mountain to move. I'm going to read that scripture for you, please. Deuteronomy 8, 18. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gives you power to get wealth. Wait, 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 wait. It's up to. He gives you the power. He, he's not going to do it. He gives it to you. Come on, somebody. Help me. Y'all see this this morning? Y'all want me to stop them and keep going? Keep going. God give us a God feeling authority, amen, to take authority over my life. I'm not living in poverty no more. I'm not living in rags no more. I'm not living without it no more. I'm not letting nothing stand in my way no more. I'm not letting the devil have my mind. I'm not letting the devil have my body. I'm not letting them have my finances. Yeah. 
and I let him have one thing that belongs to me. For three years, I stood here and ministered, but not under this authority. Our lives change. Now, it's time, Lord Jesus. I got so much running through my head right there. Good stuff. I'm praying that God is speaking to y'all. Yeah. Amen. Praise God to know that God is in you and He's given you that God-given ability. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Hebrews number three. Hebrews number one. Verse number three. Number three of Hebrews, number one, chapter one, verse number three. Susan, will you please read that for me, please? Yes. Who, talking about the Son, which is Jesus, being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He Amen. finished what he said. He took back the glory that belongs to man when he became a fleshly body. Amen. And he died for our sins to overcome our sin so that we can stand in the glory of God, so that we can stand with our rights of being a child of God, so that nothing, child, my God, so that nothing can stand in your way. He's already overcome. He's already conquered. He's already won. It is finished. He has finished his race, and now it's time for us to get in the race that he's called us to. Is the brightness of His glory. The hope of glory is in us. Yes. So define that scripture for me, please. The hope of glory is in you and I. And it's up for us to take our rightful stand. Being made, verse number four, so much a better than the angels, than the angels, as He by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they at the mighty name of Jesus. Who saved us? Jesus. Who's your God? Jesus. Who's your Savior? Jesus. Who empowered you? Jesus. And why in the world are you begging him to do what he's already done? We have been begging. It's not my word to see this. He gave us the rightful stand over devils. And I can tell y'all the honest truth. A lot of people didn't even know how to even fight devils. Because it ain't your fight. It's God's. It ain't in yourself. Yeah, we got power over demons. Don't let anybody tell you no competition. I made a statement. I've got to correct that. We're no competition to the devil. I'm saying no competition. The devil no competition to me as long as I'm living for Jesus. If I don't give him a foothold, he can't take me. Amen? You got that scripture, Susan? Yes. It's Colossians 1.27. God would make known to his saints what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Man, come on, y'all. Y'all better be shouting right now. The hope of glory is in us. My Jesus, we've got to understand it's taken God has given us the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He went to hell and preached to the captive and brought them out of hell, praise God. Hallelujah. The doors, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil ain't got no place up in your head. He ain't got no place on your body. He ain't got no place in your home, in your marriage. Oh, my God, with your money, with your car. My God, come on, somebody.
somebody, take authority over what God has given you and start going after what God said you could have. Amen. Time to take my Jesus. What God said. Hallelujah, we should have. John 14, number 12. Y'all get anything out of this? Yes, sir. God is changing us. He's changing me. I ain't, I ain't all in the next to Jesus. You got to save me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes, which is you, on me. Oh, my, my, my. Y'all don't want to hear this. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater than these shall I do, shall he do, because I belong to my Father. My Jesus. How could you imagine to do greater than what he did? Because he left us another comforter. He left us the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, my, my. I didn't just get this message out of a bag. I got this message sitting before God. And I'm here to tell you, praise God. When you got filled with the Holy Ghost, He gave you power. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'm using my shed table. I'm using my gift for what God said I can have. Oh, yes, I did to speak in tongues. Why? Because I'm not ashamed. God has empowered me and He's empowered you. Sickness had a bullshit. I command with my God given authority sickness to leave your body now. Amen. Amen. I command depression to leave now. Amen. I command anxiety attacks to leave now. Amen. I command mind binding spirits to leave now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You have no rights. Or oh, one can send a thousand and two can send ten thousand plus. I'm here to tell you there's enough believers in here to shut down every devil in heaven, Alabama, Alabama. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. Somebody say it's God's word. God's word. And his word is in me. His word is in me. And therefore I can have. And therefore I can have. What I ask. What I ask. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ooh, I felt y'all mean that. Thank you. Verse number 13. Amen. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do. Amen. Do that, that, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will. Oh, my, my, my. Take the limits off of God. He owns the world and the fullness thereof. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You eat out of a can you want to, but I like beef on my table. <laughs> You eat some pork chop if you want to, but I'd rather have a lamb chop, amen. I'd rather have a T-bone steak, amen. I'd rather have a ribeye eye pray. Come on. me like a king, praise God. God, people won't start blessing me. Why? Because I know who I am. I have a God-given right to loose what God said over your life. And when God told me and Susan to take this ministry and open it up, we didn't realize what God getting ready to do. And she showed it because God been teaching her things like she would have never dreamed. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all heard her Amen. teach from the night. Good stuff. She had been in trouble. Great job. She had been in trouble looking good. Ginger <laughs> <laughs> shiny in the Holy Ghost. 
an email back there about the birds. <laughs> Amen. And Ryan sitting there riding in his convertible. Understand. God said we are as kings and priests. If you're a king, then you're going to be treated like a king. I'm not nobody rag dog no more. Amen. Take your stand. Monday, I got a call. Y'all know we had been praying for a girl. A wonderful person you got. Had service, service tents, service. And, and uh, we went up to the hospital. We had been praying and taking the man on the telephone. But while we was at the hospital, amen, I, got, I said, y'all got some oil? And I started to anoint him with oil. And God said, back up. He said, get the pastor and the elder of the church to anoint the oil, to anoint the oil. And the prayer of faith shall move now and heal the sick. I said, this is what God said. We had revival in that room. Four, day, four hours later, they brought her back. And I mean, the doctors come back in the room and was talking to us. and said, we don't even know what it was. We don't even know if it was cancer. Praise God. I'm telling y'all right now, the doctors called her on Monday. There's no chemo. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. On Monday, I was praying with somebody who had a lung disease that was healed on the phone. Amen. That pain left their chest. And they could, they could breathe. They'd run outside the dog was barking. And they'd say, oh, the neighbors don't think I'm praying, but I'm praying to Jesus. Hallelujah. And her voice was about gone all of a sudden. Amen. Amen. Take your God-given authority. Take your, what God has given you. He's given you, amen, everybody got a measure of faith. Let that measure become a mustard seed faith. And let that mustard seed faith grow to where birds can come and nest in. Amen, where people can come and nest in your tree and bless, be blessed because of who you are in Christ. I just got a revelation from God just then. Did y'all hear what I just said? Your house, your tree, People should be getting fruit off of your tree. You should be growing in faith so that other people can grow in faith. Yes. When Stacy told me what had happened in the hospital about what God told him to do to back off and to have them do it, and God revealed to me that, that the reason he did that so that they would know that they had that power. Yeah. They were looking at Stacy to do it. When that power resides in them, and for them to do it so that they would know that they had the power to do that through God who That's is good. in them. Yeah. Man, that was just like, before he told me that over the phone. That's good. God, God wants us. And that's what I'm saying. God is taking that church to the next level. I'm going to be ministering at the church next week. And uh, I'm meeting five pastors this week. God is moving. I'm taking my stand. I'm taking my stand. And I'm telling you something. This is the writing of Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I pray the Father that he will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not. Neither know with him. Because you know him. For he dwelleth in you. And you shall be. And shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. But I will come to you. Yet a little while. And the world seeth me no more. But you see me because I live. You shall live also. And that day you shall know that I am the Father, and the Father, and, and ye in me. And I am he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, let him. <laughs> he, he that he keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved my Father, and will love him, and will manifest. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 
and will manifest myself and will manifest myself to you. Do you love God? Yes. Do you want a visit from God? Yes. Get in His presence. Get, get caught up in His Word. I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nobody in this house going to minister the same. Ain't nobody in this house going to see the same. Ain't nobody going to be doubting. Amen. Come on. You don't doubt. God don't like that. Amen. You see, he must, them that come in must believe and believe he is the Lord of them that is receiving. So, amen. So praise God. We better know and understand. What is God's commandments? It's to love God. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and with all your body, with all your self. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. Who is your neighbor? Look around. If you're not willing to die for everybody in this church, then you need to get right. Because I lay down my life for what I believe. Amen. And I'll lay down my life for what God has called me to do. And I'll lay down my life for you. Amen. Amen. That's the love of God. This is what God is saying. Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. God has empowered us. God has equipped us. And now we've got to use what God has given us. We're going to use one or the other. We're going to use complaint. We're going to use truth. We're going to love. We're going to hate. We're going to give. We're going to steal. Come on. So, amen. The thing to you this morning is to know God is saying, quit letting the devil think that he won your battle. Take your stand. Take your authority. Get what God said you to have. And let's build God's house and see God's people free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I better sit down here. Let's say so. Let's say so. You turn me on. Yeah.